mean, while I'm, while I'm just sitting here, we're waiting on a couple more people. So, how y'all doing today? Y'all doing all right? Come on, where are the smiles at? Y'all should be smiling. I mean, if nothing else, you should be smiling because you don't have to come to school tomorrow. I mean, really, isn't that exciting? You get a couple of weeks off, just to rest, relax, get your mind right, right? So you can come back and finish up the year strong. Parents, how y'all doing way back, parents? How y'all doing today? Y'all all right? Y'all afraid of all the rain out there? I tell you, in Georgia, you need to bring a long coat, a short coat, short sleeve, long sleeve, long pants, short pants, flip flops, and no shoes, because you never know what you're going to get. So we got a little bit of cold weather today, but we're going to be all right. How's your school year going so far? Everybody doing good? Are you meeting your goals and your expectations? Yes? No? Kind of? Sort of? Working on it? All right. Who in here has perfect attendance so far? Perfect attendance? All right. Okay. Was that a goal? Was that a goal? Your parents just said come to school every day, right? I got you. It works like that. As soon as they bring uh, Mr. Ferg, they come, we're going to get started. So I want y'all to do one, one favor for me. Would y'all just, everybody just clap your hands at the same time. Just clap your hands.
Good morning. My name is Art McCartney. Uh, I'm here, I'm the newest employee here, about five months in, and I'm uh, quality control manager. Uh, this pretty much goes out and makes sure everything is done correctly according to the pro protocol. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> to bring a little light to this auditorium here, I am the lone eagle standing here. So, right now, you smile. You do have a reason to smile. We got all the blue stars around here. You do have a reason to smile. My name is Alan Thomas. I am uh, with Pro Cutters as a site manager for the city of Sandy Springs. Uh, I cover up the city, uh, take care of the highways. We are responsible for taking care of Sandy Springs the way that it looks. Sandy Springs uh, is considered to be uh, an award-winning Sandy Springs. What we do is Sandy Springs award-winning. Uh, I, I thought before Mr. McFarland spoke, I was the youngest up here, but I, I am the second youngest to the top and uh, let me be a part of it. So, <laughs> listen, we're going to take it like I said. I'm the sickest youngest. Glad to be here. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> I, I am Sean Bromell, and I run Pro Cutters with my husband. I'm the president. So you see, I'm surrounded by all these lovely gentlemen here. You know what this represents? Girl power. Being president of your own company. Very good. Very good. Now, when I first started, my dream was to work in television. It wasn't running a business. But um, I did that dream. But what it shows us is that there are so many things out here for you to do. Never limit yourself. Never think that what you're doing right now is what you're going to be doing down the road. So much out here for us to do. So, um, but my favorite job is being a mommy to my baby Chase and my son Justin. Very happy to be here, seeing all of you today. And Michael, yes. <laughs> My other son, who's a, who's a lawyer now. Okay. Don't give a round of applause. So we're going to do this kind of thing. We're going to, I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes. And I don't want to stand on stage. I just want to come down and sit on the stage and just talk to you for just a few minutes. Um, honey, come down and just sit here with you. You got to sit on the stage. We just want to talk to you for a second. Now this is um, several years ago, we received a phone call. Um, matter of fact, it wasn't even a phone call. We came up here to Congress Middle School because our office is located right down the street. And we said, where, do we, where can we be impacted and where can we help? And so we came and knocked on the school door and asked them what do they need help with. And we came into Congress Middle School with a mentoring program called Men of Distinction, along with uh, one of the AP's assistant principals, which was Dr. Graham, who's no longer here. He's moved to Salem High School now. And from there, we just kind of came in and did some lunchroom monitoring, and then a phone call came in about a need for Christmas. Now, initially speaking, it was a day, a couple of days before Christmas break was getting ready to happen, and we didn't think it was going to be enough time to put anything together, but we took a shot in the we said, well, how about just ask all the kids to take a three-by-five card and write down Christmas wish, and we'll see what happens from there. But upon getting Christmas wishes into our office and we started reading them, there was one Christmas wish that we got that when we read it, it just brought everybody, our entire team, y'all can tell anybody, all these guys in here were crying. There was a young lady that she's gone to the ninth grade now and she asked for two things. She asked for pencils and she asked for paper. And we thought the fact that we didn't give a limit to what they could ask for, or her to only ask for those two things, it just 
just touched us. And so we made the decision then that whatever was on the paper, that's what you would get. So there was no limit. And so the first thing I want to tell you is don't limit yourself to what you can do. We ask for things, but if you don't believe that you're going to receive the things you ask for, who else is going to believe it? You must first believe it within yourself. I don't care what it is. You may not even be making the best grades right now, but if you want to be a doctor, you can turn that thing around. It starts with a decision that you need to make. Now, one of the things that we make sure that we do every year is the stuff that you had on your list, unless it was an iPhone or a Bible game, we don't do those, but everything on your list, you should get. And in addition to that, if you did not have an electronic device, you will get an electronic device in the form of either, either a laptop or some, some type of Samsung device, or iPad, something of that nature. And the reason for that is, so when you go home over the summertime, you need to be able to research stuff. You need to be able to do some work. You know, I know the summer is about just having fun, but sometimes if you want to accomplish anything in life, you got to do what other people are not doing. It's not enough for you to do it while you're in school. That free time you have, don't take all that free time just for it to be free time, but make it count. Some of you guys ask for PlayStations and Xboxes. Now listen, now we gave it to you, but we didn't give you the Xbox and PlayStation for it to take all your time. That is for fun. That means that you earn the fun. There's a, anybody ever heard of Jim, Jimmy Butler? Play with the, he, played, he used to play with the Chicago Bulls, he plays with the Philadelphia 76ers now. A very intriguing story, this young man got kicked out of his house at 13. He had no place to stay. He went from home to home to home, and he could only stay there a couple of nights before they put him out because he got in trouble all the time. And then one day, he met a guy on the basketball court who asked his parents could he stay with him. Now his, his, his parents had seven kids and Jimmy stayed a couple of nights, and then the mom said, I already got seven kids, I think he can't stay here anymore. But the son said, please let him stay. And the mom said, okay, I'm gonna let him stay because you asked for four nights. And then after the four nights, every other kid came to the mom and said, can I have four nights for me? That young man ended up living with those parents, graduated high school, now he's in the NBA, one of the top grossing, money-making, people in the NBA all because somebody took a chance on them. Listen, I'm telling you that you are worth it. I want you to look at yourself, point to yourself and say, I am worth it. Point to yourself, point to yourself, say, I am worth it. You are worth it. You are worth greatness. Greatness is within you. I don't care what anybody said, I don't care about your circumstances. Listen, I like doing this because I came from poverty. We didn't have running water, we didn't have electricity, we didn't have a place to stay for a good part of my early upbringing. But, I had a book in my hand. It's important, we're gonna give you a book today. I know you're gonna get all the other stuff, but it's important that you get a book, and it's called The Seven Highly Effective Habits of a Team. And then there's another book, some of you were here last year, you'll get another book. Well, I wanna talk about a couple of things, number one, you must be proactive. You must write your goals down. Who has a list of what their goals are in life? You have a list? If you do not have a list, make a list. If you do have a list, how often do you look at that list? Every day? Anybody else, how often? A lot? How often? When you're upset? Okay, listen. You make your goals, you have to go to them often because you need to get them inside of what you want to do in life. Every day that you get up, you put it on your mirror or put it in your pocket and look at it often so you have a reminder of where you're going. One of the problems is, is if we don't have a goal in life, then we're just throwing targets at nothing. You must have a goal of what you want to do in life. You know, even if your goal is just simply doing one thing, is just finishing high school, that is an admirable goal. Reach for it, hit it, hit your target, and then take it up to the next level. You must be proactive in life. Then you must begin with the end in mind. If you already know, without a shadow of a doubt, I have a 27-year-old son who just turned 27. 
when he was 12 years old, he said something that I was like, yeah, right. He said, I want to be a lawyer. And I was like, at 12, how you know what you really want to do? That's what he said. At 27, he passed the bar, he's the president of his law class, and he has a, a kind of job, federal job, working in immigration. Listen, when we talk about it now, it's like, he reminds me all the time. You remember when I was 12, I told you I wanted to be a lawyer? Listen, whatever you want to be, you have to keep the end in mind. That means that you need to do the things necessary to make your dream happen. If you want to be a doctor, what? You need to be taking a lot of biology, a lot of math. You need to be taking the classes that's going to make that happen. That means that you have to choose those friends wisely, choose your time wisely, and choose what you're going to do with it. Listen, you guys are in the information age, which means that everything you need is online. All you have to do is push in, I want to be a doctor, all kinds of stuff going to come up that's going to help you out. The next thing, you got to put the first things first. What's the most important things in life? Let me tell you that making relationships with people is very important. Relationships matter. There's value in relationships. You have to put first things first. I don't care how much money you have in life, a relationship will take you much further than money will. Relationships will get you in the door. So you must put first things first. What's important? Being a nice person. It's important. Saying thank you. Saying please. When people do things to you, being courteous. It's a simple thing that we all can do. And then you must think win-win. How does your life impact the person next to you? How are you going to help the person next to you? Every day that we get up in Pro Cutters to go to work, we have a goal in mind. How can we impact somebody else? What are we doing that's going to help somebody else? The work that we do is not for just our benefit, it's for the benefit of others. It's for your benefit. It's helping you, it's helping the community at large. That's why we do what we do. And you got to seek to be understood. Then be understood. I know that's how I there you go. Seek first to understand, then be understood. You got to, you got to open your mouth. People don't know what's going on unless you say it. Like we walk around all the time, and then we get mad because people don't understand us. Well, how can they understand if you don't say anything? How can your parents understand you have a problem unless you go to the parents and say, "I have a problem. I need to talk to you about it." And if you can't talk to your parents, they have counselors. They have teachers. But you have to be willing to say something. Now I know we have this big thing in, in the school system, out of school with people, there's no snitching thing. That snitches gets, what is it? Snitches get snitches? Is that what it says? Yes, listen, that's ridiculous. Let me tell you, if you are beside somebody that's doing something that's going to harm you and you don't say anything, who are you going to be upset with when something happens? or harm somebody else if you don't say anything. It is, you have a duty to say something if you see something. That's what we have to do. That's just being a good citizen in this world. And then the last one is synergize. Alone, we can do little. But together, we can do a lot. Always like to say things. Always. Have anybody seen the Planet of the Apes? Yeah. Y'all seen the Planet of the Apes? Everybody know who Caesar is? Caesar was the head. He was the head ape, right? Caesar was talking to one of the gorillas, and he was showing him something. He had a stick in his hand. He took that stick, and it was long. And he said, let me show you something. And he broke the stick. And he, the gorilla looked at him, and I'm sure he was wondering, why did he break the stick? And he said, alone, we're fragile. Then he took the pieces and put them together and broke it again. And then he broke it one more time. He could not break it because he wanted to show them that together we're strong. But when we're alone, we're weak. And so when you guys band together to help each other, you become a strong force. You help celebrate each other. One of the things that you must do is you must celebrate each other. You see somebody doing something good, tell them they did something good. 
because that will take help them go to the next level. And that's what we're doing, is we're celebrating each other. So today we want to just celebrate you, just for being you. Just to say thank you for being who you are, because one day you guys will sit where I'm sitting, somewhere else, and you guys will be able to help somebody else. Because you will remember this, because I never forget the Christmases when we didn't have anything, when nobody gave us anything, and I really remember the Christmases when somebody else showed up at the door with a present that I did not know. And it made a difference. That's why I'm here today. And you guys will do the same thing. So don't forget. Don't forget. So we have some credits for you guys. Can I get you guys the... Y'all ready for the Yeah, we're going to call you on the stage.
Austin all Columbus. Evan C. Jayla James.
Okay, guys, you can open your presents. <laughs> Laura! Laura!
students before you leave, we, we would like to get a group picture with the entire team, the pro team. <laughs> students, can I get your attention just for a moment? And parents. Gotcha. Oh. towards you all today. Let's thank the Pro Cutters team for our game truck today for the PBI celebration. Let's give them a round of applause for that. We so appreciate you all what you've done for our students. So if we can ask one more favor, we'd like to get a group picture of all the students along with the Pro Cutters team right on the stage, please. Ms. Diary, 